All right, guys, we're still in the book of Exodus. We haven't gotten out of Exodus yet. Um, we're going to take a look at Exodus 16. Okay, let me see here what they're saying here. And they took their journey from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel, they came into the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after the departure out of the land of Egypt. Now, the second month was considered uh, the beginning of springtime. I looked up a bib, and bib starts, a bib, which is Nissan, it starts the planting season, where they plant, and then at the end of the summer, they yield a crop. So a bib, or Nissan, uh, it starts their new year. So their springtime starts their year. So they started, um, because the Lord said, this time of the year, um, you know, when they start planting their crops, I think it was April or May or something like that, their year starts in springtime. So, and um, they start planting their crops. The ground is warm enough in springtime for their Abib festival, which is where they do their first planting. Okay, now it says um, the second month of that springtime year, which was their beginning of their year, uh, is when they crossed into Elam and Sinai in the second month. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. Okay, so here they complaining, they complaining. And the children of Israel said unto them, would to God we had died. They wished that they had died instead of being delivered in the hands of the Lord in the land of Egypt. We wish that we had died. Okay. And the reason they were saying this was because when they got out there in the wilderness, they had no way of eating. They, they, they could not fend for themselves. There was no way to work. There was no way to earn. So everything that they got with, were as far as their living was concerned, it was completely dependent upon the Lord. Every single morsel of food, every single clothing on their back. So everything that they needed, they had to go to God. They had to go to him to get that because it was nothing there. They were like in a desolate place. So that's what being in the wilderness was all about. They had nothing and everything. They went to Moses and Moses went to God. And that's how all of their provision was given to them. And so it gave them a reliance upon God and God wanted them to come to him. So this is why Basically, they had, that's what they had to do. They had to develop a reliance on God in this wilderness setting to have their needs met, to eat, to sleep, to do everything they needed to do. They had a total dependence, a total reliance on the Lord. And that's how he wanted his children to come to him so that he could provide the way, right? Not that I'm trying to make this all into a sermon, but I want you guys to see what happened here in the wilderness with the children of Israel. So they was complaining and complaining, and the Lord provided for them. Okay. Let's take a look at 17. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journey, according to the commandment of the Lord, and pitched in rapidium. Okay, so they journeyed to a new place here. And the place that they went to had water for them to drink. So the Lord told them where to go, where there was water to quench their thirst. 
which way to go, which way to journey. And they listened and they went and they received water. Okay. So everything they did solely depended upon the Lord himself. Everything. Now let's see here. It says over here, Behold, I will stand before thee upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock. Okay, showing how they received the water. The Lord did it supernaturally for them. Over here in 18, Moses and his father-in-law, Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and did obstinance and kissed him, kissed his father-in-law. Okay, he did, you know, the honorary thing when you greet your father-in-law. Amen. It says, and Moses told his father-in-law all that the Lord had done unto Pharaoh and to the Egyptians. All right, this is the part where he tells his father how they made it out of Egypt and the Lord made everything work to their benefit and their good. Okay, and the father-in-law tells him that what he's doing is good, but he's kind of overworking himself because he has no help. So he's going to establish certain people to be over certain amounts of them because they're growing. It's like a, a priest or, or a certain amount of people, over 20 people like that. That's what his father-in-law is going to say. You know, establish some leaders out here. And then he's going to do so. He's going to put certain people over certain amounts of people, you know, to manage. Okay, so now in 19, in the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they unto the wilderness of Sinai, for they were departed from Repidium and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness and there be rail camped before the mount. Okay, so they camped out there before the mountain in that area. Moses went up to God and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did with the Egyptians. Okay, so this is where he's going to send him out, you know, to warn the to warn the children not to mess up. And let me tell you something. When you're getting ready to make a mess up or do something wrong, the Lord knows. He's sending somebody to warn them. He's sending Moses out to warn. Down here in 11, he says, And be ready against the third day, for the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai, and thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about saying take heed to yourself that ye go not up unto the mount or touch the border of it whereof touches the mount shall surely put to death you shall surely die so he's letting them know that the mountain is is a holy place because that's where he come he's a holy place and it should be consecrated before them so moses went down unto the people and sanctified the people and they washed their clothes they got in themselves clean and prepared for the Lord <clears throat> God spake all these words saying I am the Lord thy God which have bought thee out of the land of Egypt 
out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other God before me. This is in 20. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above and that is in the earth beneath. So he's going to give the children of Israel the Ten Commandments. And this is in chapter 20 of Exodus. He's going to give them these things, you know, because they don't have no direction or guidance. And they're kind of doing a whole lot of stuff down there and not paying attention to what the Lord is telling them. Pay attention to him. Keep it holy. Don't come near the mountain unclean. You know, consecrate yourself before you come near me. He's laying out the whole example of how he wants them to live. So now he gives these commands, which is 10 of them, on how they can should conduct themselves. And then it also, how they should conduct themselves and how they should act amongst their neighbors. Okay. So when I come back, I'm going to read to you guys the Ten Commandments, and then uh, that's going to end the book of Exodus. We're going to go on over to the next book. All right, guys. I'm going to give you one more, and that's going to be the Ten Commandments. I'm not going to read it right now. I want to I want to get a little bit more in detail with that because that's going to uh, set up something else that you need to know. Talk to you later.